A few people are being interviewed by the hiring manager in a company called JNBC. In that interview, they are asked about their partner's ideal type and also their current relationship status. Sua, one of the employees, answers that he doesn't have a girlfriend. Sua then joins a meeting that is led by Jib, the deputy director of the ATM department. Jib reminds the employees about the company's regulation that forbids a special relationship between each employee and the company because it will cause internal conflict that will harm the company. Sua thinks that the regulation is such a foolish one. It turns out that the meeting was conducted because Jib found out two employees in her department are in a relationship, judging from their pictures together. When it's time to go home, Sua goes to the parking lot and finds Jib is already in his car. Surprisingly, Jib and Sua have been in a relationship for a while. They began to date since Jib made the first move and they flirted with each other. Now, Jib's complaints about how tired she is firing her colleagues because of the no fraternization policy. She is also tired of their secret relationship and makes her want to end it. Meanwhile Sua, who doesn't want their relationship to end like that, decides to propose to Jib. Sua then asks Jib to start preparing for their wedding. The following day, Sua meets Jib in the lift. Jib tells Sua that she told her family about their wedding and Jib's parents want Sua to resign from the company so he can start to work at the factory. He is surprised when Jib tells him that because he didn't say anything about him resigning from the company. Sua then tells her to quit the job instead of him and he promises to take care of her. However, both of them are stubborn and want to maintain their position in the company. Their little fight at the lift is stopped because they see their CEO with his son joining them. Their CEO introduces his son, named Yo, who will be training at the company. At the meeting room, Yo introduces himself to the other employees. Yo makes sure to her father that the bank's no fraternizing rule doesn't apply to a trainee because he wants to date Jib. Jib is surprised and thinks it's only a joke, but Yo says it's not a joke. On the other side, in Chonberry, two technicians from JNBC Bank are trying to install software in one of the ATM machines there. However, the manual is in Japanese, and since they don't understand what it says or change the language to Thai, the two technicians install the software recklessly and immediately go to watch a football game. Afterwards, a man named Pewd comes into the ATM to withdraw some money. He is shocked because the ATM machine always gives him the same amount of money a second time even if he's not withdrawing it. Not long after he receives the extra money, Pew tells his friend, named Pete, who is currently in the stadium, about the ATM who's giving out free money. Pete screams in the middle of a stadium and draws attention to all of the people that are currently watching the football. Including the two technicians earlier who install the software. The people who are watching the football are all coming to the ATM machine and leaving the stadium empty. The next day, the news is heard by the CEO of JNBC. He doesn't understand how this happens. Jib then explains to him that there's an error in the updated software. The technician tries to resolve the problem but fails, so all the money on that ATM has been taken out. The owner asks Jib and one of her colleagues to go to the Chonberry and find out the people who already pulled out the money because they need to take all the money back. Few hours later, Sua and his friend, Dana, are playing table tennis. Dana, who doesn't know about Jib and Sua's relationship, keeps telling him that Jib will fall for Yo. Sua gets jealous and hits the ball towards Dana. At night, Sua meets with Jib and asks her if she can go with him instead of Yo to Chonberry. Jib refuses because people will talk about them. Jib then tells Sua that she goes to Chonberry to fix the ATM and to find out who are the people that withdraw their money because she needs to get the money back. Sua feels that Jib's task is quite easy and Jib challenges Sua if Sua manages to get the money back. Jib will quit her job. But if he fails, Sua has to quit his job. Sua agrees and accepts Jib's challenge. The next day, Sua goes to Chonberry to check the CCTV footage to find out who are the people that come to the ATM machines, but he finds nothing. Sua also receives the list of people's names who withdrew the money from the ATM machine that day, but the number of people is quite a lot and it made him frustrated. While checking the list of the people who withdrew the money for the second time, he accidentally throws his car key into the gutter. On the other hand, Jib is walking with Yo together and Jib calls her co-worker in Chonberry to keep an eye on Sua. Later on, Sua stops a taxi that is driven by Pete. Sua asks Pete to take him to a locksmith in the area. On his way, Sua receives a call from one of his colleagues that explains that he will meet with the people who took the money from that ATM machine, and bring back the money. Pete, who is one of the people that Sua is looking for, suddenly panics and he drops Sua in the middle of the road. Sua keeps walking in the road until he finds a house. He sneaks into the warehouse that is located besides the house to sleep there. The next morning, he is surprised by the appearance of a crocodile inside the warehouse. 
Slowly, the owner of the house knows there is a stranger in his house. He shoots Sua, but Sua manages to run away from him. On the other hand, Pete goes to meet with Pewd and Gob, Pewd's girlfriend. Pete tells Pewd about Sua, who came into their town to get the money back which they took from the ATM. They panic because they already use all the money. They have a plan to kill Sua at first, but they both decide not to do it because the plan isn't worth it. Later on, Sua goes back to the Chonberry's office. He is surprised to see Jib in there. Sua then tells Jib that the people who withdrew the money will be at the office soon to do the interview. However, nobody comes to the office until the office hour ends. Outside the office, Pete and Pewd spy on Sua but Pete's finger is stuck and makes him get noticed by Sua. Sua then approaches him and asks them why Pete abandoned him in the middle of the road. Pewd suddenly approaches them and tells Sua about the man who took the extra money. Sua then realizes that Pete dropped him in the middle of the street because he was afraid Sua will charge them for the money they took. In her car, Jib looks again at the money withdrawal record. She finds the same name. Amara, withdrawing money a few times. On the other side, Sua wants to take back his car, but finds his car is towed by the police. The policeman asks Sua to bring his car registration for verification in order to pick his car. Sua then gets an idea to go undercover as a police officer. Sua manages to buy police's outfit and handcuffs. He then sees the region manager in a shop to send a fax containing Omera's information to the hotel that Jib is staying at. Sua then cancels the fax and rides with him. On their way, Sua sees Jib is calling the manager. Suspicious, Sua tells the manager to drop him and he follows him quietly. Sua manages to find Jib's hotel and her room number. He then comes out from the shop and meets with Pete and Pewt again. He asks them to drop him at the hotel where Jib is staying. Arriving there, he sees Jib come out of the hotel and he tries to follow her. Sua finds her trying to meet with Amara to charge back the money she took from the ATM. It turns out that the money Amara took from the ATM has been used to buy washing machines for the laundry business she owns. Sue follows Jib again to the hotel and books a room right beside Jib's room. He then calls Jib to ask if Jib is arriving at her home yet. Jib forces to lie and tell Sua that she is already at her house. Not long after that, Sua appears from the Balcony's hotel and surprises Jib. They start to debate because Sua thinks that Jib is lying and cheating on the challenge she gives him. Jib also thinks that Sua is lying to her because he goes undercover as a police officer. In the morning, Jib goes to meet with Amara but she finds her car doesn't work. It turns out that Sua has already removed the car tires. Meanwhile, Sua is already arriving in front of Amara's laundry. He meets with Amara's daughter, Gob, and she is mesmerized by Sua's appearance. Gob tells Sua that Amara is currently not at the laundry and she offers him to take Sua to her mother's place. At Amara's house, Gob explains Sua's intention about bringing back the money Amara took. Instead of telling the truth, Amara panics and runs away from Sua and Gob. On the other side, Jib meets Pete and she asks him to take her to Amara's house. Pete refuses to take her there because Amara's house is not on his route. Jib is about to leave but she sees Pete pass out after he holds a plastic bag full of frogs from his customer. Few hours later, Pete wakes up and finds himself in a bank. Panicked, Pete tells Jib and the manager that he didn't take the extra money and Jib stares at him with suspicious looks. Meanwhile, Sua and Gob go to a photo studio to take some pre-wedding photos. Sua agrees to take the photos together because Gob promises him that she will keep an eye on her mom and won't let her mom give the money to Jib. After finishing the photo shoot, Pewd approaches Gob and Sua. Pewd sees the wedding photos of her and Sua and gets heartbroken. Pewd then gives his motorcycle's key to Gob and leaves them alone. Arriving at his house, Pewd receives his clothes with a note from Gob that she wants to meet with him at the football field. Few moments later, Pewd sees Gob and approaches her. Gob asks Pewd why he hasn't proposed to her yet and asks him about the money he won a few days ago. She's disappointed that instead of proposing to her, Pewd bought a motorcycle. Gob also asks him if he took the extra money from the ATM and Pewd says yes. Gob suddenly handcuffs Pewd and Sua approaches them with satisfied looks. Meanwhile, Jib also manages to catch Pete. They both threaten Pete and Pewd to talk. Pete and Pewd then tell them everything. Jib and Sua counting the money and still missing 20,000 baths. Jib looks at the list again and found Pecorn's name in it. It turns out that Pecorn is the region manager. Sua also manages to find out who Pecorn is. However, Pecorn tells Jib that it's true he made a withdrawal, but he didn't get any extra cash because the ATM was already resetting again. Jib then looks again at the list and finds Aumne's name in it with 20,000 baht withdrawal. 
Jib asks Pakorn to give him the office key and she goes there alone. On the other hand, Sua is at Pakorn's house. He calls Pakorn to make him confess about what he did and give back the money to the bank. Pakorn tells him to ask Jib because he already told everything to her. Sua immediately goes to the bank to meet with Jib. At the bank, Sua tries to find out what Jib is doing. However, they both fail to log into the computer because they don't know the password. Later on, Sua goes to Jib's room to take a shower. Sua plans to tie Jib and take Aumnae, the last person who took the extra money, ID card. However, Jib also has a plan to lock him up and take Aumnae's ID card. Inside Jib's room, Jib is drinking the soy milk Sua gave him, but she sees Sua's suspicious looks on her. Jib then asks Sua to finish her drink. They both drink two glasses full of saw milk that make them feel sleepy. The two of them try to stay awake all night long. The morning comes and Sua manages to lock Jib in her room and immediately goes to the bank. At the bank, Sua sees Aumnae's ID card. He is surprised to see that Aumnae is Sergeant Sam, the same policeman who confronted him when his car was towed, and also the owner of a crocodile that had previously chased Sua. Sua then goes to buy a fake gun to attack Sam but he is jailed for posing as a policeman. He then calls Jib to help bail him out but turns out Jib is the one who calls the cop. At the bank, Pakorn can't log into his computer because the password has been changed by Sua. After several attempts, Jib manages to find the password and goes to Sam's house. After his release from jail, Sua warns Jib that Sam has a crocodile, but Jib assumes that Sua is tricking her. Afterwards, Sua rides Pede's truck with Pude, Amara, and Gob to save Jib. On the other hand, Jib has been cornered by the crocodile and Sam. The ensuing fight leads to the accidental shooting of Jack, Sam's crocodile. Jack is rushed to the hospital. Sam is surprised when he sees medical expenses for Jack's recovery, but Jib decides to pay for them. Jib also says to them that she will tell the bank she can't recover the money. Because Pude, Pede, Amara, Gob, and Sam have both used the money that they took. However, when Sua thinks that their deal is off, it turns out Jib was recording the confessions of the people who took the extra money and she plans to give it to her boss. A few minutes later, she changes her mind and wants to take back the recording, but she fails because her boss is already listening to it. Later, the bank sued Amara, Sam, Pude, and Pete. Pete tells Sua about it and Sua decides to return the 130,000 bath with his own money to the bank. It was the money that was intended for his marriage with Jib. Because Sua has already recovered back the money, the bank decides not to sue them. Later on, the people who took the extra money decided to pay Sua in small installments. Meanwhile, Jib has had to resign her job due to her relationship being discovered by Yo. Thus, she and Sua break off the relationship and cancel the wedding. On October 31st, the date they were supposed to get married, Sua and Jib reconcile in a bar. Sua asks her to marry him again and Jib says yes. Now after what's happening to them, they realize that in order for a relationship to work, one of them has to ease off and trust each other. Subscribe to watch more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like and comment to help the channel. Thank you for watching, and see you next time.